So here I am, day three, and I'm on my third piece of artwork in my daily challenge. And I've already put gesso on this board. It's a five by seven piece of cardboard. And I'm going to cover it with just some random uh, pieces of vintage paper just to cover it. Um, it's probably, it's not gonna be seen really after I'm finished with this, but I just wanted to, in case some of the, the edges are gonna be seen, I wanted to cover it with some of this paper. So I've got my matte medium. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start pasting pieces on. I don't care which way they go. They can be upside down. I just, I wanted some of the different browns, aged type paper to go down. This was from a book called The Little Pink Pig. And this was from an old journal, old ledger. Some random pieces. Sheet music. A very old newspaper that I found in one of my vintage patterns. Head of lettuce, 15 cents. Crisp head of lettuce, 15 cents. It's relatively flat. Even if it's not in this piece that I'm working on, it's not going to matter. Okay, just let that dry. So it's all nice and dry. That's what I'm going to. I'm going to cut around the edges.
Yeah. Nice and sort of flat. Yeah. Actually, I might need these scissors and these scissors. Okay. Now what I'm doing today is um, layering some paper and then I'm going to cut a circle in the center or actually a few pieces down to the bottom piece which is going to be this vellum it's like a purple vellum and on the top piece I'm going to make some stitches I'm just going to sew some random stitches in the hole that I'm going to cut now this is just a piece of vellum. This is just a piece of corrugated decorative cardboard that I picked up in, I think it was some scrapbook supplies. This is just a piece of, uh, it's a thick paper. It's not, card, it's not cardstock, but it's a thick paper. And that I sprayed some, some ink on it and did a little echo dyeing on it. And it didn't come out very well, but um, it's nice to tear up and use some of the pieces. And this is a piece of vellum that I put some old rusty pieces of metal on here and wet, wet it and let it sit and it made these really nice designs all over the, the vellum paper. I just laid it on top, sprayed it on, uh, sprayed water on and, and just let it sit. I let it sit I think for a few days and it, and it made these nice marks. So, I'm going to start with the first layer, and I kind of want to make it a circle shape, and I want it torn. So I'm going to go ahead, and I think I'll make some marks as to right here, right here, right here. So I just want to get it in pretty much that shape. So just start tearing. And it's not going to be a big circle, of course. I think they still have my little pencil marks on there, so I think I'll just erase them off so you can't see them. I don't think it matters much, but I did it anyways. All right. Now I noticed that some of these little corners are still sticking up, so I'm just going to tack those down a little better. That one's hardly stuck at all. This whole newspaper doesn't want to stick. I got it. I can always stick it down better later if it still comes up. All right. 
it's now this. I actually just want to glue it down in in a circle right here. I want some of it to sort of lift up. I, I don't want it flat. So I'm just going to make a circle of glue right here. Now matte medium doesn't work very well on, on vellum. So I might have to wait until this is completely dry. I put a generous amount on there. These are all experiments that I'm doing. It's all just kind of, I'm just kind of sort of winging it and, and going by the seat of my pants and deciding what to do from moment to moment. So maybe I plan it a little bit before I start just to give myself an idea of what I'm gonna do. But really I just kind of go along as, do things as they come along. There, I think that's gonna stick. See, that's it's gonna be fussy. So I think I'm just gonna wait until this dries and I'll be right back. This came out really well. I it glued in the center like I wanted it to, to wanted it to do. And what it did was where I didn't glue around the edges, it sort of lifted up and made like a nest. I love it. It's, see how it lifted. So this is a piece of vellum that I glued in the center. It wrinkled here, which I didn't care. And look at that. It's gorgeous. I love it. This is going to be a gorgeous piece of art. Okay. Now the next piece that I wanted to put down, I believe, is a piece of this. And so I wanted to fit right in that circle here. So, it's about this high, and this wide, so I'm going to go ahead and tear this one. And this one's not easy to tear. And you can decide whether you want to have, I mean, this is like just paint colored on the outside or stained or however that, how they made this. So the inside is still the natural color of the cardboard. And if you want to, you could just, you could use that with the edges, which is really kind of cool. Or you could use it like this. Think of like that way with that but I don't know I'm, I think I'm really liking this so I think I'm not going to glue it down yet and there's a little mark right there from the pencil um, I'm not going to glue it down yet I think I'm going to experiment a little bit and um, see what I come up with so this one's going to be an even smaller circle here. It's not going to leave me much of this vellum, but we'll see. We'll see how it goes. This one's going to be almost the same size. So, and too wonky. I want it more oval shaped.
I guess the trick is to get it down to a close size and then kind of whittle it around the edges until it can get what you want. I do like these edges, so I think I'm going to keep those. Now, I have an either let me make a piece that's actually. I'm going to lose all of that if I use that side, so I think I'm going to use this side. with and then go from there. Now when I glue this down, this is going to lift up as well, like this one did. So do I want to just keep it like that and let it lift? Or do I want to cut it a little more? Let me see. I think I want to cut it a little more. Just tweak it here and there. interesting. I rather like it off center like that. So I think that's what I'm going to do. And I might not even sew because if I put a, a hole in here, it's going to take away this item. I think I might just make some stitches on the side here with some brown thread. Yes, just some random stitches. So first let's glue these pieces down. I want this piece to be right exactly where it is right now. So what I'm going to do is just kind of lift it up like that. My dress, my brush has been sitting in the water so dry the brush off. Stick some glue underneath there. Like that. Like that.
and wait for that to dry. All right, I think that's dry enough. Maybe a little bit damp, but I think it's good enough. And this piece, like that. So I've got to glue down this piece here, and I'm just going to do that in the center here. Till this dries. Right. I marked the spots where I want to add some stitches and I'm going to poke some holes in here. I'm going to just make like uh, like buttonhole stitch around um, and I'll show you how I do that. I don't use this very often. One is a, sm one is a larger hole, one is a smaller hole. I think that's perfect. So which way are you doing? Okay. This one right there, and this one right there. There, okay, did it. Uh, somebody's baking cookies downstairs. I can smell them. Guess what I'm gonna have for a snack today? Oatmeal cookies. Oh my god, they smell so good. All right. Right there. I have a needle. This is my little um, pin cushion. I love her. And I have these old vintage hat pins in there. I have them for years. I have a lot of things for years. All right. Oop. Okay, a little Miss Pin Cushion. I found the pin I want, the needle I want. And I'm going to use brown. And this is a carpet thread. And I usually go about an arm's length. Now this time I'm going to make a knot. I don't always make a knot in the end, but this time I will. And hopefully it won't poke through the paper. And let's see if I can remember how to make a buttonhole stitch. <laughs> I don't know if I remember how to do buttonhole stitch. I think that I'm just going to do like a, a whip stitch around. I think that's all I'm going to do. I went into the hole and then I went back up again near the first hole. I don't want to get too close because this is paper and the paper is just going to tear if I do it cl too close. So. I'm going to go a little bit a ways, back down, and that's all I'm going to do is just go all around the hole in this manner. Oops, that's a little too far away. Ah, I'll leave it. I can't find it again. Once you make a hole in paper, it's, it's not going to... It's not going to disappear. <laughs> it stays there. So I'll leave the hole there and just keep going around this way. And randomly. I think I'm going to like that. It's not going to be a nice, neat buttonhole stitch. If you know it, it's not even a buttonhole stitch. It's just going around. Oh, those cookies smell wonderful
all these art pieces are just experiments and um, giving me a chance to don't have your pencil nearby <laughs> to learn different techniques and methods of doing things and that's really why I wanted to do a daily piece of artwork to sort of just learn some new techniques. Um, I look online, I go on YouTube or wherever um, and look up different ways of making art and I find one that I like and then come back and make it or make a version of artwork using that technique. I think, I think that's pretty cool, the way it is right there. Yes, I do like that. And this one will be a smaller one. So on the back of the paper, I'm going to just tie my stitches off. And how I do that, if you're not a sewer, is you just, you go underneath a couple of the stitches you have on the back. You pull it through until it's almost all the way through, and then where it leaves a loop, you put your needle back through the loop, and when you pull it tight, it secures it in a nice little knot. And I could do that twice to make it even more secure, but I'm going to be gluing this down. So I'm just going to snip off the end probably about a half an inch away and just leave it like that. Yeah. So now I'll just do the other one. If you don't like to sew, you don't have to do this. You can you can put a, a piece of um little piece of paper there or nothing at all or whatever it is that you like. I just decided this is what I wanted to do so here I am. Now I want to make sure that I make this one a smaller circle. So I'm going to go so a little bit closer to the to the circle not go so far out. Don't pull too tight or you're going to tear your hole. So it's a little bit loose, that's fine. Snug but not tight so that you're pulling on the paper. One more. Hmm. I like it. I'm glad I did it. Now, the question is, do I want to put another one over here? I think... I think I do want to put something there, but not another circle. I think I'm just going to make a few little random stitches there just to carry your eye over and up to for interest. Again, I went through some of the stitches. I left a loop. Put my needle back through the loop and pulled it tight, but remember, not too tight because you don't want to rip your paper. 
And this one's really, eh, no, yeah, it's really loose, so I'm going to make a double knot. So all I do is just go back in and, and go through the loop again. And that makes a nice secure knot. Cut it off about, that one I did about a quarter of an inch. And there it is. So over here, little stitches overlapping each other I don't know if you can see this and I'm just sort of Xing it them over themselves in a very close little cluster can't really do too much because it's paper and you'll just perforate it too much and make it come apart. So that's all I did was just made a few little random stitches and then you can see how your eye will carry up, up and look, want to look at that as well as this as well as the other things around here. So since I have some dark dark lettering down here in the corners, your eye is going to follow all those little dark spots as well as the interest in the center, hopefully. And I'm going to make my little knot. Let's glue this piece down. So what I want to do, I just want to glue this portion right here. So what that's going to make this part sort of rise up like this one did, hopefully. So let's take our trusty little brush here and go ahead and brush that on. I think I'm going to come out a little further here. Yeah. Now I'm going to get my blow dryer and I think I'm going to get this a little more, but then I'm going to take my blow dryer and dry this in. So I will be right back. So I'll dry, and after it dried, I felt like it needed a little bit uh, more tearing around the perimeter. Um, I just felt like it needed to be a little bit smaller, and I left these little points, which I don't like. So there. So that's how it came out, and I would say that's all finished. Put a list of the materials and tools that I tools that I use down in my description, if you want to know. And again, I have to sign it and things right here. My little JML signature right there. And that's it. And I thank you again for watching. This is my third piece of daily artwork. Um, challenged myself 
um, to see if I can do this for a whole year, make one one piece of artwork a day for a year. And I said, as I said before, I'm not very good at commitment, so we'll see how that goes. But hey, as long as I'm having fun and and um, being myself and making the thing, making things, that's what counts. So thanks again, and I'll see you tomorrow.